Good evening, my name is Phil Schomber. I'm the adult programmer here at Hedberg. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Katie Vaughn. Uh, Katie is the author of 100 Things to Do in Madison Before You Die. And in addition to being an award-winning author, Katie was the managing editor of Madison Magazine and is currently a writer for the College of Letters and Science at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And as an expert on all things Madison, she's here tonight to share some suggestions on what to do and places to go in Madison this summer and spring. So please welcome Katie Vaughn. Thanks so much. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. Thank you for being here tonight. And I'm so glad that we are here this week and not last week when it was snowing. So it <laughs> feels like I, I hope you are as gung-ho as I am about getting ready to celebrate spring and summer. Um, so just a, a quick bit of background. Um, I've spent most of my life in Madison, Wisconsin, and I just think it's such a wonderful city. So anytime there's an opportunity to, um, to sort of tout the city, I love to do so. And um, uh, yes, I worked at Madison Magazine for about eight and a half years. And um, a lot of what ended up in the book were things that I had covered um, while I was an editor there. So, um, so this, was, uh, this book was a good extension um, of that work. But as I was starting to work on the book, I thought, okay, let's, um, let's make a list. Let's get this list of 100 things going. But um, I thought I will start with the biggies, the, the quintessential Madison things that everyone has to do if they, if they go there. And I thought, I'll get those things out of the way, and then I'll dig into other stuff. But I was really struck by how many of those big, classic, quintessential things there are to do in Madison. Um, I was struck also with how many of those are actually free, um, which is really cool. And then I was also um, surprised by how many of those elements and events have been a part of the city for a really long time. I think it's a testament to the city that um, that those things not only are so longstanding, but constantly celebrated and still feel fresh. So anyway, I hope that this list of about 10 things to, um, to consider if you're starting a bucket list for spring and summer in Madison, hope it's a nice mix of, um, of some things that maybe you'd want to revisit again or or, or some things that maybe you haven't done yet. So feel free to interrupt me at any time, and then at the end we can, we can also chat a bit. So here we go. You may not be surprised that I'm starting with the Dane County Farmer's Market. It is such a, um, a must-do for anyone visiting the city. It seems like um, if, if someone has a, a friend coming into town, this is, this is where they take them to the Capitol Square on Saturday morning, um, and, and they see the, the vendors all, all across the Capitol Square. It's the largest produce um, or producers-only vendor's market um, in the country, so, so the people that you meet um, are the ones who, who prepared or grew or harvested the, the food. So. Um, one of the things that people seem to make a real point to get is the cheesy bread from Stella's as well as cheese curds and then whatever else is, um, is fresh that time of year. And you'll probably see some of the city's biggest chefs also shopping the market and then um, what they pick up there will end up in some of the coolest dishes in the city. So, so it's a fun place to be. Um, but you should go early. We've made the mistake of going not early and <laughs> the, the crowd kind of, kind of swallows you up. So. Um, Another biggie, though, um, which just always is worth the effort to go, is um, the Memorial Union Terrace. This photo is probably the emptiest the terrace has ever looked. So, <laughs> and actually, tonight, as we're sitting here, um, volunteers are unpacking the chairs in the in the. Um, tables and setting those out. Everyone was so eagerly awaiting that on campus. But um, whether you go with friends to get ice cream or a beer or both, it's just a great place to hang out. And um, it's considered the living room of, of campus as well as I would say the city at large. So um, great place to listen to live music um, on summer nights or um, catch, sometimes they have outdoor films being screened and then lots of other events. And Hoofers there is um, uh, able to rent out boats and, and things like that. So always a lot going on. Um, Madison is known to be a really bike friendly city, which is great. And there are all sorts of different trails, but um, the one that I would recommend the most is the Capital City State Trail uh, for a variety of reasons. One is because it takes you downtown and through the campus area, and then it takes you um, out past the lakes and then into um, also some uh, more like field and um, prairie area. So you, you kind of see a lot of different elements of the city. So it's, it's really, I think, a, a good one to showcase how beautiful the city is. Um, Madison's also known as an incredible foodie city. And I 
not going to list all the different restaurants that there are in town, but um, I would recommend taking a food tour. I think it's a really great way to explore the city. Um, uh, there are a couple different vendors who do them, and they can show you, um, they can give tours based on different cuisine types or different neighborhoods. Um, there, it's, it's really a neat way to to explore the city, sometimes sort of like a reason to, to go into different, different places. Um, some of them are on foot, and some of them are bar by bike, and then there are some that specialize in breweries and wineries and distilleries. So definitely um, a fun way to kind of get a taste of Madison, so to speak. <laughs> um, so Madison every summer puts on what I think is the greatest picnic ever. Um, the Wisconsin Chamber Orchestra comes out of Overture Center and then sets up on the Capitol um, Square lawn. So um, people can come and set out blankets um, in the afternoon, or you can just show up right before the concert. And it's six different Wednesdays throughout the summer. The orchestra performs a mix of classical and pops music. Each week is a different theme. And um, it's just a really, really fun place. You can, you can bring a picnic or grab food from a food cart or one of the restaurants nearby and um, maybe a bottle of wine and just, just hang out and listen to music and enjoy the atmosphere of the city. It's really just one of the one of the best events I think in Madison. There's always this um, debate about whether you're supposed to talk during the concerts or you're supposed to be quiet. And when I was at Madison Magazine, I interviewed um, the music director, the maestro who conducts the the concerts, and um, and I asked him like, are you allowed to talk? And he said, yeah, I think it's fine to talk. So if if you get shushed ever when you go there, <laughs> you can just say that. No, Andrew Sewell said you can you can talk. So um, anyway, that one that one is just great. Another um, defining feature of Madison are its four lakes, specifically Lake Mendota and Lake Monona, which make Madison an isthmus. I believe Madison's one of two uh, major cities to be on an isthmus in the country. So, um, of course, you can walk or bike by the lakes um, in Lake uh, or Monona Terrace and the Memorial Union overlook um, the two main lakes, but there's something special about getting out on the water and you don't have to have your own boat to do so. Um, Wingra boats and Brittingham boats and um, hoofers at the terrace rent out boats um, so you can get paddle boats, paddle boards, canoes, kayaks, all of the above. And um, one of the things that is on my bucket list is to go to Wingra Boats and get one of their um, paddle boats shaped like a swan, because I just want to take an Instagram photo of it, because I think that would be really fun. So. Um, if you grew up in Wisconsin, you may have gone to the state capitol when you were probably in about fourth grade and studying state history, but it's still worth a return visit. Um, tours are offered almost every day, and during the summer, you can go up to the observatory deck and for a really neat view of the city. Um, every time I go to the capitol, whether it's for a you know, specific reason or if I'm just cutting through um, in the most beautiful shortcut to like get warmer during the winter. When I'm downtown, um, I always have to stop and look up at the rotunda. It's just, it, it stops me in my tracks every time. It's just so breathtakingly beautiful. And um, I just think it's great that it's open, it's there, it's, it's for all of us. And um, there are also more head and jump type things to explore in the capital. There are little fossils embedded in the marble throughout. And there's, I think, a hidden door somewhere that I was hearing about one time. So um, it's it's definitely worth worth a visit. Kids always seem to want to play on the stairs. The stairs are just the most magical <laughs> for kids. So um, if you haven't been in a while, I think you would enjoy going back. And so the Capitol is on one end of State Street, of course, the, the main pedestrian thoroughfare through the downtown. And then on the other end is um, Library Mall in Bascom Hill. At top of Bascom Hill is Bascom Hall, where um, it's the main administrative buildings of of the university, but um, and also where the big Abraham Lincoln statue is that recent graduates uh, sit on and get their picture taken. But um, I think the hill itself is really fun. It's kind of a treacherous trek up, but um, especially if you're a student lugging books or laptops. But um, but once you get up, it's just so fun to sit or stand in that grassy area and overlook the downtown and really puts you in the footsteps of what it's like to be a student or faculty member making that trek every day. Um, this place, Pope Farm Conservancy, has really become popular in the last couple years. Um, at the end of July or in the beginning of August, um, they have these fields. It's like as if cornfields had been replaced with just sunflowers. It's just these rolling hills of sunflowers, and they're all blooming at the same time. And the sunflowers are all facing up to the sun. And it's just 
absolutely gorgeous. Um, it gets really popular. It seems like everyone's taking senior pictures or engagement pictures or proposing or, you know, whatever. But it's, it's just so beautiful and magical. I did hear literally just today, so I should apologize for this, that um, they may not be doing the sunflowers this year. They may be taking a break. But it's still a really, really pretty place. Um, they have lots of different trails, and it's sort of up on a bluff that you can you can look out and see um, some of the lakes and, and then a little bit of downtown. But I would assume they would be bringing the sunflowers back. They kind of rotate the fields. So um, I'm hoping that if it's not this year, that it'll be coming back for next year. So it's worth keeping your eyes open for that because it is um, just like un unlike anything else I had seen in, in Wisconsin. And then... Um, with Madison has some really unique architecture, older turn of the century buildings in the Mansion Hill neighborhood, um, as well as a lot of Frank Lloyd Wright designed or um, other prairie style architects work. And a nice way to look at some of that work is through a historic architecture walking tour. These tours have been around for a long time and they're really, really high quality. They can take you into different neighborhoods like the Mansion Hill neighborhood or State Street and um, give you these really cool glimpses into the past. And kind of like the food tours, it's like another little avenue through which to, to experience the city and learn a little bit more about it. And I think they give you beer and ice cream at the end, so that's always fun too. So, um, so I went through those 10 tips really, really quickly, but I would love to open it up to um, questions. If you have specific questions about looking for ideas for things to do in Madison, I'd love to try to play uh, Madison Things Matchmaker, or if you have questions about the book or um, wanna suggest ideas to each other, open to any of that. So I don't know if anyone was coming with a specific type of activity they'd like to do, would, might want some other ideas, but happy to, happy to help in any way. Yes? What would you say is the top garden center? Top garden center, in terms of um, someone wanting to pick up uh, flowers? You know, for a sheer variety of neat things, yes. uh, neat setups, maybe lots of that they've done, ideas, yes. all that stuff. A good idea. So um, let me see, what is it called? Gosh, there's a place on the, I think it's in Stoughton, um, so just south of Madison. I am oh, Flower Factory. Flower Factory, yes. That one I think is amazing. Um, I just met a woman recently who runs Mad Lizzie's Flower Farm. So it's, um, it's a flower farm where you can go and um, they do flower CSAs, but also for a while in the summer you can go and pay, I think it's 20 bucks, and you get a bucket and then you get to pick your own sunflowers and, and take those home. But um, so I, I think Ulbrich Gardens is always amazing just to see the gardens that they have out on display. And then they have um, that beautiful Thai pavilion too, which you probably know about that. Um, and then the Arboretum as well, I think, always is doing some interesting things. I'm looking forward to next month just going out and seeing all the trees starting to blossom. Um, I think that's so beautiful. But in terms of garden centers, um, gosh, uh, Feli's flowers and Jung's, I think, do a nice job, but I'm, I don't know beyond that too much. I am a terrible gardener, so I'm not very helpful up there. I keep buying plants and then, you know, hoping that they stay alive. But <laughs> if I think of anything more, I will, I will let you know. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Do you have a favorite place to eat? I have many. <laughs> um, yes, I... I'm a huge fan of the work that Tori Miller does. He or he runs, um, let's see, Sujo and Estreon. Those are his newer ones. He also is a chef of L'Etoile. Um, and then the restaurant right next to it, um, which I am blanking on the name, but it is, it's so beautiful. It has these huge glass, um, glass windows that overlooks the Capitol. But um, I think he does really, really great work. Um, also, I really like Sardine over um, where Willie Street starts, um, really near the Monona Terrace. Um, they do a really great brunch and happy hour, and it's, it overlooks the lake, which is really, really pretty. So um, that one's really nice. Um, gosh, um, for food and a nice view, the new um, AC Hotel right by the Capitol has um, the new location or a second location of Eno Vino. It's a wine bar and restaurant. And um, so the food's really good and it just has like, these breathtaking views of the Capitol. It feels like you're practically on top of the Capitol. It's always neat to see a new view of the city. And so that one is, um, is quite nice and it overlooks on East Wash as well. So um, yeah, that one is good. Yeah, so many, gosh, so many good places. Is there a certain type of food that you like the most? Yes. Anything about sushi? Sushi, got it, yeah. <laughs> Not a sushi person, yeah. <laughs> yes, um, gosh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else. But no, those restaurants have all, I think, 
really established themselves. Um, everyone probably has a, a, you know, their own preferences and stuff, and I won't even try to make a recommendation about a fish fry or anything like that, because that gets really heated, but <laughs> everyone's got their own opinions there. But yeah, yeah, if I think of anything else too, I'll come back to it, yeah. Anyone else? Well, you had a picture of the Lao restaurant there. We just, oh. Saturday, we just happened to see Two of them. There are two of them, is yes. That, is that a chain, a different part I think there are just two restaurants that that woman runs, but they're so good. They're really, really good. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Lo Lang Zhang, right? That, that, is that where you went? Um, or was it? Oh, we didn't go there, but we, we, we... Oh, you saw it? Yes, yes, it's really, really quite good. And that's um, in the, the Atwood Willie Street neighborhood, which is just a good place in general for food. Um, I think it's one of the best uh, dining destinations. So um, actually, and that reminds me of um, another restaurant on um, in that area is umami. It's um, it's not sushi, but it's um, it's uh, Asian food, and it's really good. They also have a food cart um, on Library Mall that I go to like so often that they know my order now. It's um, <laughs> and you can get these. Um, my favorite is the spicy tofu buns. They're really really good. But um, so yeah, that's another one to check out. Very very good. <laughs> yeah. Whereabouts was that? Hope Farm. Hope Farm. Oh, Hope I should have You're right. It's it's on the far west side, um, kind of bordering Verona and Middleton. So it, it's way it's way out there, but um, but quite beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Isn't it the Children's Museum? Yes. Yes. It's lovely. It's um. So they re. So they. It used to be on State Street when I was a kid, and now they've they've moved it over um to just off of the Capitol Square, and it's beautiful, and they they made that transformation with um, eco-friendliness in mind. So it's an incredibly green facility and it's really, um, it's really, really a neat space. And they have what they call adult swim. So I don't know if it's every month or every other month where they close the museum down f um, for everyone else except for adults to come at night. And I think they set up a bar or something. It's, it's, I've, I've not done it, but it's, it's on my list of things that I'd like to do. It sounds really, really quite fun. But um, yeah, the museum's wonderful. And actually, that's a, a good point about museums in general. That one is not free, but so many of the museums um, in Madison are free. So, um, so it's in especially the art museums, the Chazen Art Museum, and then the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. I think are just just wonderful um, and incredible that 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 great of art is is free of charge. So. I love both of those. And then the James Watros Gallery um, in Overture Center right by the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art focuses on Wisconsin art. So that's really great um, as well. So yeah, I love art. So I can <laughs> talk about that all day. Yeah. Yes. Have you been to the Science Museum? Pretty new. Yes, there's a Science Museum and then there's the, um, the Geology Museum on campus and the Physics Museum is turning I believe 100 years old this year, which is really, really cool. My um, husband used to, as, a, as an undergrad at UW, go to the Geology Museum, just to, um, if he was stressed out about finals or something or midterms, he would go and just look at these rocks that were millions of years old just for perspective. <laughs> so I always think that's a neat story, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that's a really incredible museum. I'm sorry, Gray's is the other Tory Miller restaurant, sorry, that, um, <laughs> yes, you would pop into my head at one point, yes. <laughs> Is, is the uh, museum in the rotunda still open? Because I know there was like a, an exhibit on architecture that was up there. Oh, in the Capitol? Yeah. Yeah, I am not sure what is in there now. I think, gosh, I think the university just had a display up there recently too. I know they're always changing things. And of course, during the holidays, the, the holiday tree and things like that. But um, I don't know if that, I remember what you're talking about, but I'm not sure if that's still there. I'm sorry. But yeah. We happened upon a flute concert there one time, just randomly. We we're just walking through the Capitol, and there was this flute group in Madison playing. We thought, well, that's a magical <laughs> coincidence. So that was really fun. <laughs> Any must see, must eat Thai food places? <sighs> Thai food. So, um, yes, good question. I like um, Thai basil. That's that's our go-to one in our family. <laughs> but um, I'm trying to think of which other ones. There are certainly others, um, especially in that Atwood Willie Street neighborhood. I'm not going to remember all of them by name, unfortunately. But um, but they they do a good job. I think good resources for when it comes to food. Um, Isthmus and Madison Magazine, and then um, the Cap Times all do a lot of really good food coverage, and I think they do a nice job on um, keeping up to date on restaurant openings and closings, so those are always really good to, to check out. They do their, do their work really well. 
Do any of the Frank Lloyd Wright homes, are you able to tour any of them, or yeah. is it just all walking tours? No, good question. So um, there are walking tours from the outside. Um, obviously, Monona Terrace and um, and then Taliesin over in Spring Green are um, are open to the public. And then the Unitary, Unitarian Meeting House right over by University, um, or I'm sorry, the UW Hospital. Um, those are all open to the public. The, the Unitarian Meeting House is really interesting. A few years ago, they did in addition to it, um, which it, it's sort of meets Frank Lloyd Wright's design, but in a more modern interpretation or contemporary interpretation, but they, they've done that really, really thoughtfully and beautifully. But um, yeah, sometimes there are, um, there's this, there's this tour called Write and Like. I think it's a conference and festival. It happens every couple of years. And I think at during that time, a lot of times homes will become open to the public. We just have to kind of catch that at the right time. But um, yeah, Taliesin is definitely worth a trek out to Spring Green to see. Spring Green in general is just so, so beautiful. But um, I toured that recently and it was really, really neat just to just step into that environment. It's so immersive and, and interesting, whether you're a fan of his architecture or not. It's um, really neat to see him br having brought that to life. And, and they describe it as a sort of living place still, that it continues to evolve even, even after him, which is really interesting. But, do you have a favorite theater group? Gosh, I I think what um, Forward Theater is doing is really, really exciting. So when the Madison Repertory Theater closed a few years ago, um, Forward Theater sort of sprang up in its absence with a lot of the same people involved, but they've done such an amazing job. They're a professional theater company in Madison, and they've brought to Madison a lot of um, premieres of plays. So it, you don't have to necessarily go to Chicago or to New York always to see what's really groundbreaking or new. They are bringing a lot of that um, to Madison, which is really exciting. I think Broom Street Theater is amazing. It's been around forever, but it's they've always been really experimental and out there, and I think that's wonderful, and they, they're still growing strong. I think that's really great. I think the, um, the resident groups at the Bartell Theater do a really great job, and they all have their own niche, and it's really great that they're there. And um, Overture Center is kind of continuous and adding new groups to, as, to its resident company lineup, so I think they're doing a nice job. But um, Theater Leela, too, has, has, I think, come onto the scene in a strong way as well, which is, um, which is great. And they've been doing some a um, little bit more experimental or groundbreaking things, which has been really fun to see. Of course, I'm missing a few here, but um, but those are great, yeah. And then I, that reminds me of the dance scene in Madison. I think it's it's amazing how much dance there is, or that not only comes in through Overture Center in the Bartel, but just Madison Ballet and Canopy and Lee Chow Ping Dance and some of the folks that are in the UW Dance Department. They showcase their work, and it's um, it's really really. Uh, for this, a city our size, it's amazing that we have so much high quality dance. So um, it, it's great to go check that out too. But what else are any, any other things you guys like to do or look to do when you're going anywhere? Well, Saturday we also happen to see the Barrymore Theater. Yes. Has that been restored? And what kind of things do they do in there? Yeah, so I've been seeing some messages on Facebook that they're kind of revamping it. So I don't know what exactly they're moving toward, but they do a really, or had been doing a really good job of music and comedy and some films all together. But um, yeah, the live music scene in Madison, I think is really interesting. I'd covered that a little bit um, when I was at Madison Magazine. And um, I did a story one time trying to probe, because I would hear these different things like, Madison's a great music city. And then some people would say, it's not a great music city. And I wanted to know, like, really is it? But it, it where I came from, and this was a few years ago, was um, that there is so much talent here, so many amazing musicians, and then some great venues, but not always is it the case that the local musicians play at the biggest venues. A lot of times those are bigger folks coming in to tour, but um, but there is you know everything from the Barrymore and Overture Center and, and the Coliseum and the Lion Energy Center down to, to smaller venues. So it seems like it's just sort of a, a the challenge of finding the right fit. The, the venue to the artist, but um, but no, I like um, I like going to all those places. I like the especially in the summer. There's so many outdoor music festivals in Madison. So the Majestic Theater started live on King Street um a few years ago, and I felt like from the start that just has felt like one of those events that's always been in Madison, even though it hasn't. So they they close down King Street and they do an outdoor music concert. They bring in folks. It happens probably five or six times over the summer. It's really cool. It's free and it just makes Madison feel so 
I don't know, exciting and hip, I think. But um, then there are Central Park Sessions. Um, it's, a, it's a concert series in the summer. It's held usually at Central Park, and they, um, they theme those concerts each time. And they'll bring in a variety of musicians around like a certain theme, like a certain part of Africa or, or, or a certain genre or something like that. So I think they do a really good job. Um, and then there are events like La Fête des Marquette, um, which is around Bastille Day, and it's a sort of celebration of French culture um, featuring musicians from all over the French-speaking world. So that's really um, neat to see as well, and they've kind of expanded that to be a little bit more global in focus. Um, there's a World Music Festival that comes to the Memorial Union um, every year, I think at, in early September. So um, I think music sounds better sometimes outside, so it's fun to, fun to hear things outdoors. So a lot of those are, um, are great. I feel like every summer comes a new music festival, which is great, but it's, um, and then there's uh, on the summer solstice, so June, usually June 21st, they have Make Music Madison. It's this event that started in Paris, I believe, and now it's held in cities all across the world, where um, from, I think, sun up to sundown, they try to create a continuous wall of music. So it's, it's music happening all over the city. So artists get to um, sign up for a spot and it might be a public park or it might be a storefront or it might be a, a street corner or something like that but just music happening all over the city all throughout the day and it's all different types of music and levels of musicianship and it's it's really a cool thing to see so yeah yes how about any really good children's practice yes that is a good question i um when i was driving into janesville i saw a really big playground and i thought oh i'll have to bring my <laughs> kids there that looked really fun um yes i'm trying to think of the best ones i sometimes the public schools are really the, like great pl playgrounds to go check out um i'm trying to think of what some good ones are the um so the henry Vila zoo is actually an amazing resource it's free it's a really wonderful zoo and then there's a playground right next to it which is really quite nice and i think what um some people my age like is that they've kept some of the same equipment that we played on as kids and, <laughs> and of course updated some too but um but i think that one's really nice and then the beach is so close by and, and the zoo obviously is right there too so um i think that is quite fun um if i think of others i will i will pop that in here too <laughs> good question though what about you guys? Were you looking for specific parks or anything, or outdoor type adventures? No. Mm -hmm. No, I just found a page here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. 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 I agree. Yeah, it's always fun. I I know for me, bucket lists are helpful in the winter to make me get out and not just hibernate at home. But in the summer, it helps me organize. Okay, there are so many things, and I'll make kind of a calendar of all the stuff going on. It's so easy for things to to pass by every weekend. It seems like there are lots of different things to do, which is a wonderful problem to have. <laughs> but. Yes. Well, what websites we look at to? What get all those festivals in one place? Yes, good question. So um, I do think that the Isthmus does a really good job. Isthmus.com, I think, is just their website. Um, they do a really great job of keeping an events calendar really up to date. I feel like they always know everything that's going on. Um, but it, it, I wouldn't say it would be. I, they probably don't have it all filled out for the whole summer yet. But um, but if you know you're coming into the city for for a day or something, I would I would check out there. Um, Madison Magazine works farther in advance, being a monthly magazine, but they're a good resource too for kind of the highlights coming up. Um, and then obviously the State Journal and the Cap Times do a great job covering things too. So they'll probably give you the backstory to something going going on. Um, on the 100 Things Madison Facebook page, I pick something each week to highlight, but um, but that's not a comprehensive guide to, to everything going on. But um, yeah, I know Madison Magazine did a festival guide a year or two ago in one of its summer issues, just because there are so many festivals going on. It was kind of nice to plot that that out. So that might still be online. Um, sorry, I don't have that handy, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? If I were a um, whiskey fan, is there any place I ought to... Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so Wollersheim Winery out in Prairie du Sac um, has been a winery for a long time, but they recently added a distillery there. So um, that is worth checking out. It is just so beautiful out there. Um, I've not done the distillery tour, but, but I imagine you can do that and, and do some tastings. Um, also, Yahara Bay 
does a really good job. They make a couple different types of um, of spirits and, and liquors, and they have a new facility um, over on Nesbitt Road by Quibby's Grove. I don't know if you've ever been to that restaurant. It's really historic, and they do a really good fish fry. But anyway, it's um, kind of where Madison meets Fitchburg. Um, they have a really cool modern facility with a big bar, um, Yahara Bay does, and then they um, sometimes have live music there. So I've, I've been there for a couple different events. It's like really hopping, and it's like just in this corner of the city, and it's, it's, it's really cool there. So I would recommend that. Um, let's see. And then there's also um, Old Sugar Distillery downtown. It's kind of by like the High Noon Saloon and some of those music venues um, on East Washington Avenue. So it's um, kind of where downtown meets the, the Near East Side. And that's that's really cool. It's um, They have a lot of their old barrels inside the space. And um, they, they you can have um, just like their whiskey, but also sometimes mixed drinks. They do a really good job creating um, really creative concoctions. So I'd recommend any of those too. And then similar to that, the beer scene, it's like too many places to, to describe all at once, but um, the beer scene is so awesome in Madison and people are collaborating and there's always something new opening up. Um, so there are so many, so many great places to drink great beer and people doing so many creative things. There's um, one barrel brewery, it's, which is a, I think a nano brewery. So they do one beer really at a time. So they're super creative. Um, I also really like the Wisconsin Brewing Company in the summer. It's a brewery out in Verona and um, it's it, they have this big brewery facility and then they have a big lawn and a stage where they have bands playing in, in the summer at night. And then um, it's surrounded by this really open kind of field and um, a stream. It's just beautiful in the sun sets and you're dancing and drinking beer. It's just super fun. So I recommend that one as well. Um, wholeheartedly. <laughs> my kids actually ask if they can go to the brewery because they like to chance. And I think, oh my gosh, how Wisconsin is this? Raising kids who like want to go to the brewery, but kind of proud. <laughs> but, um, yeah, any other questions? This is really fun, so <laughs> always happy to answer. Yeah. Any prospect to somebody reopening Ella's Valley? Oh, yes. So I know that it was a big deal that it was it was shutting down. So yeah, it was. Uh, it looked like they're trying to find new owners. I don't have not heard if or who it will be. But there was this huge groundswell of attention when it was announced that they were the owners were leaving, and um and I know people lined up to to eat there again before it was closing. And they there was a I think on Facebook. Uh, a group started to try to raise money to like maybe as a group reopen it, but I don't know what's happened there, but I can't imagine it would really go away. Too many people I think care about it. Did, have you been? Have you, you liked it? Oh, yeah. 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 I was glad to have taken our family there before it, it closed, but um, cause I remember going there as a kid. It's really cool. Cause there's nothing else quite like that <laughs> anywhere in the city. It's, um, it's it, for those of you who may not know, it's, it's, it's this big um, kosher deli, but even more interesting than the food was just all the contraptions they had. They had all these toys and like things zipping through the air and like all these really tinkery, really interesting contraptions and decorations. And it, it, I, you could probably describe it better. I'm not describing that very well, but it's a really cool, cool space. And then they had a carousel, this old historic carousel outside. and. They, did there used to be two locations? The, the last one was on East Washington Avenue, right? One on State Street. State Street, okay. Yes, yes. But yeah, it seems like such an iconic part of Madison. I can't imagine it would really be gone forever, but I guess things are always changing. <laughs> yeah. Great. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, well, feel free to, to ask me at any time or hit me up on Facebook or anything, anything like that if you have specific questions because I'd love to be able to help and I can give things more thought sometimes <laughs> later too. So. Great, well thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs>